Hello everyone. In this lecture, we are going to look at various techniques to display data. SSRS provides us some basic tools like tables, matrices, charts, graphs, etc. to represent the data. So we are going to look at some of these techniques. In the previous lecture, we saw how to create a simple SSRS report. The example which I showed you is called as a tabular report. In reporting services, tables, matrices, and lists are data regions that display paginated report data in cells that are organized into rows and columns. The cells typically contain text data such as dates, text, numbers, but they can also contain some charts and report items and images and so on and so forth. So collectively, tables and matrices and lists are frequently referred to as tablex data regions. So we saw how to display data. These were numbers and text data. We can also display some graphs and other visual controls as well. So I am going to show you some few examples in a few minutes. So I got this very interesting image from the Microsoft website, which kind of gives you a good distinction between a table and a matrix report and a list. And we'll, we'll look through some examples as well. We use a table to display detailed data, organize the data into rows, groups, or both. The table template contains three columns um, with a table header row and a details row for the data. And you will find this control in the tools section in SSRS. We'll try to walk through an example as well. The next one is a matrix report. We use a matrix report to display aggregated data, you know, in the form of summaries grouped into rows and columns. And it's kind of similar to our pivot tables in Excel or, you know, the cross tabs that we refer. The number of rows and number of columns for groups is determined by the number of unique values in each row and column groups. We'll also see some tricks and techniques for, you know, how to create a sort of a drill down effect and how to toggle visibility between certain rows, how to expand collapse certain groupings of data and so on and so forth. So just bear with me for a minute more and then we'll jump into some more examples. The last one is a list. Now we use a list as kind of a free form layout. Right, so you're not limited to any grid layout, but you can kind of place your fields freely. So imagine like, you know, you want to display some sort of a business card style kind of a report, right? One for each employee or, or something like a scorecard, which is customized for each employee. Um, you know, you have some stats, you have some text, you have some charts and stuff like that. This is a perfect example where you would kind of use a list. So you can use a list to design a form for displaying many data sets, right? Uh, many data set fields or you can use it as a container to display multiple data regions and so on and so forth. So for example, you can define a group for a list, then add a table, a chart, an image and display values in the table and also in a graphical format for each group value. So don't get confused too much. We will look through a simple example um, and which uh, after which you can use the same example and you know, you know, have your imagination run wild and actually create highly customizable lists, um, you know, which is as per your requirements for your particular project. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a simple report over here and I'm going to call it as table uh, matrices and lists. And let's see what options are available. So first and foremost, as I do with any report, the first thing I need to do is I have to go ahead and create a item and I'll go and say add item and I'm going to create a report, right? So this is going to be TML report. And once I do that, the next thing I need to do is I'm going to go and grab some data. So I'm going to add a data source and we'll use our same data source that we have been using so far and, you know, drag and drop the sales territory so that we are more familiar with that since we have walked through that example a few times. So I connect it to my data source and next what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a data set and I'm going to use the data set data source that I just created and I'm going to just add a table to it. <clears throat> so we've been dealing with sales territory. So let's just use that. And then, you know, if you want to look at the data, oops, sorry, uh, I need to select a few columns. And if you want to look at the data, 
this is how it looks like right all right so to keep this simple what i'm going to do is first i'm going to show you how to create a table right so this is what we have been seeing so far so there is a header and there is some data in it right and the simplest way to create is basically you know you just drag and drop your columns and that's kind of pretty much it right and then again all these as, as i had uh, mentioned in my previous lectures you can actually uh, write a lot of expressions to go ahead and customize this but this is how a typical table would look like just like an excel table right you just you know it's, it's just a combination of rows and columns this is how a table would look like now let's go ahead and you know look at something a little bit different so let me go ahead and delete this and what i'm going to do now and I'm, I'm going to use a matrix right and if you see a matrix you basically see it's a little bit different there is rows there's columns and there's going to be data in it right so imagine this like a like a pivot table right the to be pivot tables that you use in excel the way that you actually um, use that is you have some rows and columns and 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 the aggregation or the summation or whatever types of aggregation you want to use is basically the intersection between the rows and columns and that's precisely the idea that we are using in a matrix support as well so let me go ahead and uh, maybe let's say um, let's go ahead and use country region code let's go ahead and use a group and for data let's go ahead and use the sales ytd right and um, and let me go ahead and run this so this is like a typical tabular report that we just saw but one of the things you can note over here is see how this gets grouped so you have the first hierarchy from country region code and then you have the groups and so on and so forth so um, let me show you something interesting let me actually go ahead and drag and drop this group as columns and I'm just going to get rid of this and let's see how this displays so this is basically you see that there is um, you know there is an intersection between columns and rows and and the intersection is um, you know your aggregated data so this is kind of like a pivot table and I'll go ahead and just um, delete this so that we have some good column and row information as well something cool uh, yeah I want to show you one more thing so let me go ahead and just click on preview um, and let me do something all right so let me go ahead and actually delete this so that you know we can keep the example a little bit simpler now you see that there is in the names column there are many names right and and some of them are repeated and whenever they are repeated you have like certain groups right now if you want to kind of collapse this right whenever uh, it's it's like a classic pivot table if you want to add a plus sign here and collapse and expand on need basis we can kind of do that by toggling the visibility so in in the group if i go to the group properties i could just say that visibility by default hide it and just toggle it based on name right so if i do that and click on preview you kind of see that you have these plus signs right and and when you click on this you kind of get the next level so this is how you can actually now now this is a very probably not a very good example but imagine that when you have a uh, particular column one and lot of subsections of column two um, you know that's where you can really use the power of this one all right so let me go ahead and show you another example um, let me see let me drag and drop a group and a country region code and sales ytd right to keep it very simple so it looks like this and what we're going to do is we're going to control the visibility of the country region code and i'm going to do that by going to the group properties going to visibility and saying hide it by default 
but only show it when somebody selects some group, right? So in effect, it's going to create this hierarchical effect. And if you preview this, it kind of gives you a collapsed version where you can kind of expand and you see the sales YTD also expanding accordingly, right? So this kind of gives you a expand collapse kind of a look and feel. So again, you can do a lot of things in this. These are the common things that people do. Uh, the next thing I wanted to kind of show you was um, a list, right? Uh, and I okay, so we have configured our data source. So let me quickly show you how to create a list. And when I actually insert a list, it just kind of gives me a blank template where I can actually configure it however I want, however I want it to render, right? So. The first thing I need to do is you see the square, I need to click on that and first make sure it is using a data set. So I'm just going to point it to our data set and then um, I need to define how I want it to be grouped, right? So this is something that will be repeated for each value, this whole template. So I'm going to say that, um, you know, group it on maybe territory ID, right? So let me show you how this will look like. So I'll drag and drop a text box and I'll just say territory ID and call this as territory ID something, right? Kind of play around with the font a little bit. And let's see how this renders. All right, you see that the Territory ID is basically repeated uh, because it's it's a list and there is some space here. So this is actually a whole list. This is another list. This is another list. It's, it's kind of a template that gets repeated for each value. And to kind of make it more, you know, visually appealing, let's, let me show you a few more controls. So I'm going to go ahead and just insert a rectangle over here just to make it look nice. And I can go ahead and just fill it up with any color. So let me say rectangle properties and then fill it with maybe whatever, gold color, right? And if you see the preview, now, you know, you kind of get a look and feel about this, right? So it's kind of now, now getting shaped up. So let me go ahead and do something. Let me go ahead and maybe show you how to insert one more control, maybe a matrix control. And I want this um, to be grouped by country region code, right? All right, so I will have country region code and maybe the sales year to date, just keeping it simple. All right, so now you have this, right? Territory one, territory two, territory three, it's kind of shaping up, right? So you can do anything, right? You can actually uh, maybe even insert an image um, you know, and, and then play around with it, you know, uh, you can kind of, if it's for each employee, you can actually put the employee image in it. Let me show you one more thing. Let me kind of, uh, insert a chart. Maybe, what do we do? Okay. Let's, let's insert a bar chart, right? And, um, what I want is this bar chart needs to be grouped by, let me just click this. let's say groups, okay? And here, what I'm going to do is, let me make some space. I want the category groups as group and maybe the values as, mm, say, cost, right? And let's see how this gets rendered. Um, yeah, maybe there's a bad example, but you get the whole idea, right? So because it's kind of group to one, so it's not showing any um, bars, but you get the whole idea. Actually, let me go ahead and change a little bit. Let me actually say country region code, and I want to see the sales, right? That might kind of give me some, oops. Oh, come on, 
sales all right let's see if that helps all right you see us and california and then there is a chart develop right and we can actually even i can record a lecture just specifically for some visualization but you can do some cool things over here like uh, vertical axis properties and then maybe say the number should be a currency so that it displays in dollars and so that when you preview it, it it kind of gives you a dollar sign over here so there's tons of stuff you can do but this is the overall idea right so um, in essence list is nothing but it gives you a kind of template where you have complete control over how you want to render it right um, I, one one simple example i can give you is lately i had developed um, a scorecard right and that gets customized for each employee right um, so i kind of wanted to have that in a manner that it's easily in a printable format so that when i go for one-on-ones and stuff you have this whole scorecard with seven pages in it for seven employees um, that i can just readily use right no parameters nothing i just open up this report um, this report has list one one particular um, you know uh, list for each employee uh, that it gets dynamically generated and it gives me all the relevant information i have it nicely arranged and stuff like that so many applications to this um, you can actually customize it however you want but i just wanted to give you an overall idea of how the list works hopefully you enjoyed this um, so we'll see in the next lecture